The ayes have it. Call on members order of the day number four. Local Government Freedom of Access Amendment Bill, first reading. Mr Speaker, I move that the Local Government Freedom of Access Amendment Bill be now read a first time. I nominate the Justice Committee to consider the bill. Mr Speaker, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the member who introduced this bill into the ballot and, should it progress through further stages, uh, will be in charge of the bill, Mr Jonathan Young, MP for New Plymouth. He has put a great deal of effort into addressing issues that he has seen both within his own electorate but um, also observed across New Zealand. This is a delicate sort of a measure uh, which uh, seeks to strike a balance about, around the uh, often competing rights between parties uh, in, in the exercise of democracy. Mr Speaker, freedom of speech is a critical foundation of our democracy and it must be protected. In the Friends of Voltaire, Evelyn Beatrice Hall wrote, I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Those words speak to the very essence of freedom of speech, that such freedom is neither bound nor constrained in its exercise by the agreement to it by others. That essence notwithstanding, there are times when in the pursuit of one's goals, people can and have stepped beyond a line where their pursuit of freedom has impinged upon the freedom of others. And that is what this bill is about. This bill seeks to uh, better balance the rights of councils to protect property from being interfered with and to ensure that communities have freedom of access to lands that councils are responsible for administering, while ensuring the rights of members of the public to express their opinions in the form of protests and demonstrations on such land. Now, the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990 guarantees citizens the rights to seek, receive and impart information and opinions of any kind in any form, and the right to freedom of peaceful assembly. Those rights can only be limited if doing so is demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. The exercise of such rights by protesters who erect structures and tents on council-administered land has been seen by some councils as akin to camping, uh, something which they see may prohib prohibit the freedom of others to not only access the affected areas, but which may also present a health, health hazard. Uh, such councils have, in some instances, resolved that that should not be permitted behaviour through bylaws. Unfortunately, Mr Speaker, there is some ambiguity uh, in the enforcement of such bylaws and trespass notices, particularly in instances where freedoms of speech and peaceful assembly are involved. And I'll offer a couple of examples. Uh, firstly, a point of order, Matt Ducey. Uh, the Speaker at the moment, if he sits down without correcting this issue, it's very hard to unwind, so that's why I've taken this point forward now. Uh, I just want to clarify from the Speaker uh, whether this Members' Bill will go to the Governance and Administration Committee uh, that the Clerk has been advised, or the Justice Committee that he instructed at the start of his contribution. Mr Speaker, speaking to the Port of Order. May I, have, may I have, please, a moment just to confer with my colleague, uh, which may help to resolve this matter? OK, and I'll, I'll take some advice as well. I got an email from Jonathan. OK, so if you say that on your speech. OK. Mr Speaker, I'd just like to confirm for the House that the committee that I've nominated in my speech is the committee which is intended. Can you re sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, the committee which I nominated, which was the Justice Committee for Consideration, is the committee that is intended uh, in the introduction. In the, um, the, uh, the member will need to seek a uh, point of order to change the original statement. I said it in oh, the speech. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr Speaker. So again, on the example of the Dunedin City Council, no, issued a trespass, no, trespass no. notice against occupied Dunedin participants in early November 2011. The police issued... 
Well, I, I don't trust the chair of that committee, Ms Dyson. <laughs> we need impartiality in this matter. So the, the Dunedin City Council issued a trespass notice against occupied Dunedin participants early November 2011. The police uh, issued a statement the following day, and I will quote Mr Speaker. Any power to trespass people protesting in a public place must be exercised reasonably in balanced rights and freedoms. These are the issues we are currently working through with the Council. The area commander said that. He also said, we understand the wider community's frustration and recognise the competing interests who use this space. However, we live in a democracy and we need to be sure that any power to trespass people protesting in a public space is exercised reasonably and lawfully. In a similar vein, uh, and around the same time, actually, Mr Speaker, there was also an Occupy protest in Wellington, a uh, protest that was supposedly, supposedly only to last a week, uh, lasted for over 100 days and took over one month to resolve after the Wellington City Council issued the first notice uh, to have those particular protesters move on. Now, the point, real point here, Mr Speaker, is that the uncertainty of the application and enforcement of law, particularly council bylaws and trespass notices in this area, impedes authorities maintaining the balance of rights and freedoms for all parties. So the purpose of the bill is to ensure communities have freedom of access to lands that councils are responsible for administering by preventing persons from obstructing, impeding or preventing an enforcement officer or local authority agent from carrying out their statutory functions, duties or other tasks required of them, including by refusing to provide particulars or providing false or insufficient particulars uh, and to widen the scope in which any enforcement officer may remove or seize property. It is important to note, despite interjections from across the other side, that this bill does not infringe on the right to peacefully protest. It ensures the rights of members of the public to express their opinions in the forms and demonstrations, uh, protests and demonstrations, but enables councils to prevent protests from becoming long-term live-in occupations, whether such as tents and structures impede use of the land by other citizens, uh, potentially causing property damage and health hazards. Uh, I do note, Mr Speaker, that the Attorney-General uh, has uh, uh, issued a report which concluded that the bill does appear to have some incons uh, inconsistency with Section 22, uh, liability of the person, uh, such that cannot be ju justified under Section 5 of the Bill of Rights Act on the basis that the power to arrest is arbitrary and that it appears to be without reasonable cause. Uh, the Attorney-General says in the absence of judicial supervision, for example, through issuing a warrant for arrest, he cannot conclude that appropriate safeguards exist to mitigate against disproportionality. I would also note, Mr Speaker, that the Attorney-General goes on to say that the inconsistency could be remedied through limited amendment to the bill. This is clearly an area which the Select Committee could and should investigate further. In conclusion, Mr Speaker, the bill seeks to address a delicate balance of the right to protest and the right for citizens to enjoy their public environment in a safe and peaceable manner. This will be an interesting bill to work through should it go to Select Committee, and I would expect and trust that we would receive a wide range of views at that committee. I ask that parties across the ho this House will send this bill to Select Committee so that New Zealanders can have their say. I commend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. Um, I call the Honourable Nanaia Mahuta. Uh, in taking a call on the local government,